fallacy in human evolution is the identity of the ancestor of Homo sapiens, but there is also the question of the ancestors of the Neanderthals and Denisovans. It's complicated, but researchers are gaining some clarity in the vast web of early human species that preceded modern humans. In the genus Homo, sapiens stand alone today. Once we had an abundance of cousins, including Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo erectus, and others. Our isolation makes it easier to assume that hominin history has led up to Homo sapiens, the apex of evolution. Various lines of human-like primates have evolved, had their chance in the sun and perished, leaving their more human-like descendants to approach the form of modern humans. Rudolf Zaliger's infamous artwork of the road to Homo sapiens, now more commonly known as the March of Progress, is often blamed for creating this perception in the minds of the public, although that was not what Zaliger himself intended. But when paleontologists and anthropologists look back at the history of hominin evolution, they find a veritable Gordian knot, one that weaves back into itself, with innumerable dead ends. For a clear example, consider our quest to learn the ancestors of our closest relatives, the Neanderthals and Denisovans. The Neanderthals are probably our most famous cousins, short, stocky humans who went extinct around 40,000 years ago, with some surprising theories as to why. Less well known but equally relevant are the Denisovans. Remains were discovered in Denisova Cave in Russia in 2008, and genetic analysis revealed them to be very close relatives of Neanderthals. It turned out we had not one, but two closest relatives. But who were the hominins that gave rise to the Neanderthals and the Denisovans? To answer this, researchers analyzed all the new genetic data available on Neanderthals and Denisovans to advance our understanding of humanity's demographic history. In the process, the researchers identified a bottleneck in the population of the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans. They wouldn't have a satisfactory resolution to that puzzle until recently. The models improved some after adding in various supplementary factors, such as the gene flow from older hominins, known as superarchaics. Also, evidence of hand axes, which first appeared in Africa nearly two million years ago and then spread to Eurasia, suggested another possible explanation. What if ancient hominins, likely Homo erectus, had colonized Eurasia as early as two million years ago, not just traveling there and dying out, but forming sustainable populations? Then the ancestors of the Neanderthals and Denisovans, called the Neanderthals, interbred with those hominins around 750,000 years ago. It should be noted that the term Neanderthal has also been used for Neanderthal Denisovan hybrids, but in this case we are using the term for the common ancestor of these two groups. The Neanderthals, the researchers say, evolved around 800,000 years ago and encountered their cousins, the superarchaics, likely descendants from Homo erectus. The groups interbred before dispersing across the continent, with Neanderthals later emerging in the west, and the Denisovans emerging in the east. Exactly like what happened more recently, when modern humans expanded, interbred, and separated into eastern and western populations. But nailing down who these earlier hominins were, or what they looked like, is extraordinarily difficult, for a number of reasons. The single greatest problem is time. The oldest hominin DNA ever retrieved was 450,000 years old. Some research suggests that the upper limit to retrieve sequence DNA is somewhere in the range of 400,000 years to 1.5 million years. And while we know a fair bit about Homo erectus, which likely formed some, if not all, of Eurasia's superarchaic population 2 million years ago, those hominins had over a million years to evolve before they interbred with the Neanderthals. And there are other basic questions that remain to be answered in this quest. For instance, where did the Neanderthal lineage branch off from the rest of the hominins in the first place? Yeah. While there are hominins that are good candidates to be representatives of Neanderthals after they interbred with the superarchaics of Eurasia, nailing those down is simply impossible. Homo antecessor, a hominin that lived in Spain around 800,000 to 1.2 million years ago, could be one. But there's this ambiguity about the relationship between the genetics and the fossil record. Though, a protein analysis of the 800,000-year-old tooth enamel of Homo antecessor lends this theory credence. Perhaps Homo heidelbergensis was modern humanity's last common ancestor with Neanderthals. 
Paleontologists never know whether any fossil had descendants, but geneticists always know the fossils had ancestors. There's no guarantee a hominid had any descendants at all, or that its species didn't go extinct before any other species split off from it. Further complicating the picture are discoveries of yet even more hominins, and long-standing debates about how to classify them. Some anthropologists argue that what is commonly called archaic Homo sapiens is actually composed of a number of different species. What makes us human has become as much a taxonomic problem as a philosophical problem, especially for the time period 400,000 to 800,000 years ago. That is around when the Neanderthalans would have interbred with the superarchaics, and then branched off into Neanderthals and Denisovans. Indeed, the taxonomy of that time, I think, is confused, so I'm not comfortable with the taxonomy of that given part of history. If Homo sapiens actually predates the ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans, then we are looking at a scenario where Neanderthalization was a case of negative evolution. I wanted to ask you to quickly subscribe to the channel, which helps YouTube know that our content is compelling, so they will recommend the channel to a larger audience. Also, smash the like button, share the video, and leave a comment. Thank you for your support. But who are these super archaic humans? The map of human prehistory is starting to look more like a tangled web than a family tree. First, we heard that our own ancestors, early modern humans, got it on with the Neanderthals. Then we learned that the Denisovans, another ancient extinct human, interbred with both Neanderthals and our own forebears. Now, a team of researchers has come to the conclusion that an even older line of superarchaic humans interbred with the common ancestor of the Neanderthals and Denisovans, the Neandersovans. The new model suggests the superarchaic human split from the common ancestor of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans around 2 million years ago, close to the time when the Homo erectus line first appeared. The ancestors of modern humans then split with the ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans, and Neanderthals and Denisovans split from each other by approximately 700,000 years ago. This superarchaic population interbred with the Neanderthals and then later with the Denisovans. When they interbred, the superarchaic humans and Neanderthals would have been separated for 1.2 million years. Mm. The superarchaics were even more distantly related to the Denisovans they mated with. Mm. Later still, early modern humans split into an African and a Eurasian line, with groups in the Eurasian line intermingling with Neanderthals and Denisovans, but not with superarchaics. In the latest study, a team of scientists looked for shared sequences in genome data from Neanderthals from the Altai Mountains of Siberia and the Vindiger Cave in Croatia, as well as from modern Europeans. Then they used a computational method to determine which of several scenarios best fit the data. Several simpler scenarios for how history might have played out have been proposed over recent years, but every model fit the data poorly. So that was an indication that something had been left out of the model. The missing piece, according to the new model, is the superarchaic humans. Therefore, the results resolve some thorny questions that had existed with previous work. For example, one proposal, based on genetics, estimated that Neanderthals and Denisovans split around 381,000 years ago, yet Neanderthal remains found in the Spanish pit of bones, predates this split. These bones have been dated to 600,000 years ago. That was a real discrepancy between the genetic estimate and the fossil estimate. The new model fixes this discrepancy. It also fits with a fairly simple narrative of early human migrations. A first wave of migration out of Africa occurred around 2 million years ago. Fossils in Manasai, Georgia, that date to 1.85 million years ago attest to that migration. The superarchaics likely descended from this initial Eurasian settlement of Homo erectus. Around 700,000 years ago, a second wave of evolution occurred. This was the Neanderthals, who largely replaced the resident superarchaics, and went on to form Neanderthals in the west and Denisovans in the east. Mm -hmm. Later still, around 100,000 years ago, the ancestors of modern humans made the trek out of Africa, eventually replacing the Neanderthals and Denisovans from Eurasia. Who were these superarchaic humans? Nobody knows for sure, but Homo erectus and Homo antecessor are both contenders. 
but it could have been some other population that we don't know about. Indeed, researchers sifting through the genomes of modern-day West Africans discovered the signal of a dalliance with an ancient ghost hominin. Whether the ghost hominin from West Africa and the superarchaic hominin are one and the same is unclear. Not everyone is convinced, but disagreement in science isn't a new drama. We'll eventually sort out what explanation fits better, often with better data. Yeah.